The profound and inescapable transformation of Washington, D.C., over the past two decades can be summed up in a word. Growth. The city has grown denser, wider, wealthier, taller. It has ushered in scores of glassy new buildings and seemingly unending development. It has remade areas such as the wharf, bringing new restaurants, music venues and waterfront hotels to a strip known for its overwater fish market into an entertainment hub. And it has at turns invigorated, disoriented and displaced longtime residents. Washington Post photojournalist Bill O'Leary is one of them. A native Washingtonian, he has documented life in the nation's capital for more than 30 years, witnessing its transformation up close and through the viewfinder of his camera. There used to be so much more character in the city. Now, in so many neighborhoods, it's just this wall of glass, O'Leary said. Not all of the change is bad. DC was so downtrodden for such a long time. It's been amazing to watch its comeback, but there are a lot of things that I miss. To capture a glimpse of this change, O'Leary revisited several spots in DC to recreate photos he took over the past 19 years. These images showcase how much has changed, and what remains the same. Perched on the steep edge of a four-story deep crater dug into Massachusetts Avenue Northwest, a diminutive row house became a symbol of defiance in 2006 in a city whose land was being sold off to developers parcel by parcel. Austin Spriggs, an architect, turned down offer after offer to sell his home to developers seeking to build bigger, taller buildings than the row houses that used to dot the street between Union Station and the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. In the end, developers gave up and decided simply to build up and around Spriggs and the peeling brick row home out of which he ran his business. This stretch of Massachusetts Avenue, just east of Mount Vernon Square, was for more than 30 years dotted with row houses that deteriorated over time into a line of vacant lots and urban blight. But the 2003 arrival of the convention center ushered in a wave of development that stood up thousands of apartments and new offices. Spriggs and his wife, Gladys, both now 87, bought the two-story house in 1980 for $135,000. The parcel last changed hands in 2016, when it sold as a commercial property for $3.9 million. The row house today remains crunched between two towering buildings, though it is no longer a residence. Instead, it houses yet another sign of changing times in the district, a cannabis dispensary. Before there was Megabus, Bolt Bus, Vamoose or the German imported Flixbus lines, the Greyhound bus terminal in northeast Washington was a hub for commuters, tourists and residents traveling to cities near and far. It also was a hub for shootings, undercover police, guns, fights, hustlers, and more. As cab driver Thomas Cambron put it, looking on as the terminal shut its doors in September 2012.